Hey AOC fans from around the world, how are we going today? We are currently spectating a game, if you can't tell what it is already, it is Nomad. No town center present, plus we've got water down there, so you should be able to tell, um, well I guess you wouldn't if you don't really know the game that much, but well if you do know the game you should have been able to guess that in the first few seconds there. So what do we have? We have RVK Orcus, also known as Chris, who has recently gone over to RVK obviously. He is playing as Green, playing as the Persians. His opponent will be... The Viper playing in his red and playing as Persians also. So we are up for a mighty fine game. Let's have a look at the map and the areas that they have. Viper choosing an area here going to be very easily harassed from the water. And he is actually ages away from any gold at all. In fact, he has no resources around him at all at the moment. So he's going to be in a lot of trouble there when it comes down. He's going to have to push down here. Going to have to take this area here where these four gold mines are. Even just taking this area down over here would be alright. But where he is at the moment, he does have quite a good position. He can defend it off quite easily. But without all those gold, wood, and things like that, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And he hasn't seen any gold yet either. And when he finds out he's on this little peninsula, he's going to realize how hard it is to actually hold this area. Down here though, Chris Chris doing quite well, honestly. He has a gold down over here to the back of his base, which he should be able to use without too much issues. Uh, just currently looking at it at the moment, he's in quite a good position, not going to be able to be harassed from the water anywhere. Gold towards the front as well, he's got three boars in his area which he's going to have the ability to lure. He's got some sheep there and he's already off exploring. So let's check the exploration of both players. Exploring out with this villager here as well as this one. Doesn't look like he has any sheep at the moment to really scout with, uh, but he does have the water here which means fishing, and we do know that I believe shore fishing uh, there is the fastest method of gathering food, so he's going to have a little bit of a bonus there. Got a house coming up there for Viper just to scout around, and it looks like he's going to find Chris. Do we have Chris? No, he dismissed him there by that little bit. Chris, have you found Viper yet? Chris has not found Viper yet. He has got a fair few sheep, so he is using them to scout. And he has found quite a few extra, actually, so he's going to be able to use them as well. Has found the boar over here, so he's going to know he can lure that in as well. Already got his second one in there. Putting that house down. Seeing a Viper's house there, so his guess would honestly be that Viper isn't too far away. But Viper is actually all the way over the other side of the map here. Completely across here, so we can expect to see some extremely intense galley fighting. Considering they're only about this far away from each other. So, naturally, that should be good to watch. That should be very entertaining. However, when they will see each other, though, is the question. Because they're both probably, once these main spots here are finished, they're both going to have to fish out into these areas, and they're probably both going to get caught in this area, I'd say, because their fishing ships are going to move up, and they're going to see each other. Viper is playing quite a smart game, though. He is putting down these houses so he can tell when Chris is expanding. He's going to be able to tell if he's going for that out there. And Viper finding these three sheep here, which I am guessing are immediately going to go to Chris if they come around this section here. And no, he's missed that there, so either he knows it's there. Wait, there we go, so those sheep have been claimed by Chris. So that means that Viper does know he's there right now, he's still continuing to explore out. He knows Chris is in this area, we've got that little patch there, so we don't know whether he's seen that house there or not yet. And my guess is these guys know they still have not seen each other. Coming down to this one down here instead of going up here. So my prediction there was a bit off, but that wasn't too bad. Honestly, they will come across each other eventually. And they'll realize just how close their docks are. So what do we have here? We have lots of sheep down here. And Chris just saying, okay, you've paid your tribute in there. I'm assuming that's to the three sheep he left away there. Uh, too bad to the viper there. Those sheep could have been great asset to have. However, he's got these two down here which you can grab, which is no real problem. And he's got all his shore fish to himself. He's going to be able to absolutely smash out them. So currently on 32 population, it looks like he will be going to advance quite soon. He doesn't have any villages being produced. And he does have quite a few villages on food. He does have a lot there on wood. So he is going to be able to do that. And it looks like, what are we doing here? Are we going to come down and build a lumber camp? Or are we going to come build a gold mine? There we go, gold camp there, but we do have Chris already going up into feudal age, which means Chris is probably going to have a little bit of a weaker economy, but Chris is going to be able to get out those galleys first. Do we have any galleys coming out for you? Chris, let's have a look. One galley, two galley, three galley, ah, 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 uh, that was, that was bad, my, my fault there. Two galleys out there, though, for Chris. Chris is going to be able to take a lot of, well, water control right now, especially considering the Viper is still going up. This game here should be quite good, honestly. Chris is in a great position right now. He's got these fishing ships going down, having to move them away. We do have the feudal age there for Viper, though. Viper going to be having to create some of these...
galleys down here, and he's going to have to store them in his dock, most likely. Either that, or he's going to have to go completely to land base. And that's exactly what we're seeing. He's not even bothering in the water at this point. He knows it's going to be too hard to get back, so he's gone straight into a land combat mode. So we've seen archers coming out there. He does have quite a few gold miners there. Five already on gold. Chris, how many do you have? Do you even have any on gold? Doesn't even look like Chris has any on gold. He must. Where are they, Chris? Show me your gold villages. There we go. I think I went straight past them before. That, that's embarrassing. But we do have two archery rangers there, building heaps of archers. We do have a blacksmith up. No doubt going to get flexed, fletching as soon as possible. This wall off by Chris, very well done. However, it can be broken very easy. We've already got fletching underway there for the viper. What do we have? These villagers here, sure, fishing here is going to go downhill, considering we can get these galleys around here. Do have a barracks up over here. Mill coming up down here, so he can use these deer. And what do we got? We do have these guys coming in here, building a tower up here for the Viper. Viper going to be able to claim this gold source here. Well, not claim this, but get in. It looks like Chris is very confused there. He did manage to get past that wall. You've always got to check that you wall quickly. We do have a barracks coming up there for Chris, so it means he does want to finally transition over there. He has got water control, but at this point, what does it really matter? He's going to be able to snipe at Viper here, but Viper is most likely going to be able to hit him with the town center. So at this point, it does look very bad for Chris, actually. Viper is down a bit in score, but this could be a brilliant comeback right now. Watchtower going up, going to be able to hold this gold mine here. Pushing his units away from this side here. Viper doing an excellent job of pushing this in. We've got an archery range coming up here. Chris no doubt wanting to get some skirmishes out there. But we do have archers just streaming in for the Viper right now. Viper is getting harassed by these galleys. However, it's not too bad. This gold source here too is unharassable at this point. As long as he's got the pressure on Chris down here, he shouldn't have too much trouble. This watchtower here going to be doing a lot of damage. Let's see, a Viper, what have you got on the scope? So can't see anything. Can't see anything that he doesn't already know about Chris. So there's nothing new going on either, so he shouldn't have too much trouble. We do have an archery range, though, which... Two archery ranges, which means we can expect to see some skirmishes. Archers on the opposing side of this forest here, which means these villages are all getting picked down extremely quick. Viper is starting to close in on the score as well. He's starting to do a lot of damage. This direct land-based assault is doing a lot of damage. He's currently at 2-1, while Orcus is at 2-3, or Chris house being put up here, so just pretty much taking over Chris's base at this point. Chris may have the control of the water, and players do value the control of the water a lot. He's going to have a lot of food income there. But when it comes down to this, I would rather have land control than water control if it turns out like this. We do have archers versus skirmishes. Skirmishes do have that upgrade there. And they do have that bonus versus archers, but when they're outmassed, they are not going to be very helpful. Especially if you just have archers streaming back across the map. We do have Viper going to skirmishes, though. Strength in numbers is what they say. Watchtower coming up here. It looks like he's going for a villager attack there, and that is not going to help at all. He's losing lots of villages right now. He does have the score lead. He can afford it. But he is losing so many villages right now. I can't believe how many he is actually losing. This is great play by the Viper. Going to be able to come back here, no doubt. Being forced out by these skirmishes, though. So he's going to have to do, well, quite a miracle to get this back. Surprised he didn't wall this gold, actually, while he had the chance. That could have been a good tactic. This tower ha over halfway up. And if you can get that back and get some villagers in there to do that, that will be extremely painful, but not a lot else he can do at the moment. Still got lots on gold there, quite a few on farms. These deer here just are running out now. Two archery range, still still creating archers and skirmishes, though. So he does not want to stop this push. He wants to keep this push going as best he can. Archers here getting caught out of position by those skirmishes. Tower there looks like it will go down to these villagers, but it does take a valuable time for those villagers to take them out. As we know, while they're attacking, they're not gathering, and that's what we want villagers to do, gather. Tower 98, there we go, it's finally up. Nearly lost out on that. Surprised she hasn't garrisoned more units in it yet. These archers probably could have garrisoned in and done a little bit of damage to these skirmishes. But that tower is going to go down, and... All in all, I think it's a success there for Viper. Viper's managed to take all those villages there off gathering. And they are all pretty low health, honestly. Not looking good right now for Chris, even though he's up by 700 points. Viper has just put the pressure on, he's just absolutely piling it on at this stage. And once we have Viper going to the Castle Age, Chris still in Feudal Age. Viper going to be able to even further. Especially with the Persians, he has the option to go to crossbows and get the upgrades for them, or he has the option to go up for knights. Chris is going back to this back gold here, however, going to be able to use that to his advantage. Villages back here looking to be in pretty decent shape. Got the hill advantage here, but he is highly outnumbered. Doing the smart thing there and running off. Three archery ranges now for Viper. What do we have here? We have a stable going up, so we can expect knights on the advance. When they come up, they are going to absolutely destroy these skirmishes. Skirmishes, of course, being extremely ineffective.
effective against knights unless they're in very large numbers. Chris going to Castellate. Chris is halfway towards Castellate, whereas Viper is in Castellate. Going to be able to push that advantage there a lot, honestly, if he uses all these buildings. So we do have, there we go, one knight being created, two knights out of that stable there. And do we still have crossbows? We have the crossbow upgrade done. We have the bodkin arrow upgrade done. I believe it's bodkin arrow. Correct me if I'm wrong. But no archers being created at all at the moment. Going completely into knights by the look of it. And killing off more and more of these villages. I don't know how Chris is still going. He must have such a bad economy at the moment. He does have a few on gold back here. But he's got hardly any on wood. He does have a lot of fishing ships out here giving him... Food, which he's obviously trying to sell off there, I would say. Selling that food off for gold and in turn using it to buy wood. But at the moment, and we've got a siege workshop coming up in the middle of Chris's base. Chris up by 700 points, but Viper's still playing very aggressively right now. Knight's coming in from this side over here. We've got a bit of a fight going down over here. This knight absolutely demolishing these skirmishes. No upgrades to the knight at all, however. We, can, we don't even see bloodlines on it at this point. Knight going down there, but causing significant damage down there. And we have a Manganel being created, going to be able to do a hell of a lot of damage when it comes to these tight group of archers. And whether or not Chris sees it in time is a question. He's going to know it's there now, so he's going to know he's going to have to defend up against that. But there's not a lot he's going to be able to do without it. Knights are going to break through here, but we do have these archers and skirmishes reinforcing this area here. And Viper is putting on the pressure right now. And we have a battering ram coming out as well. This battering ram is going to be able to demolish these buildings extremely quickly. As we can see, coming through there, next goal is going to be that town center. Chris is still only up by 500 points, but that's still 500 points difference. That is a fair difference. But Viper is just playing at such a good game right now. It's going to be extremely hard for... Well, if Chris can push him back, he's going to have a good chance this, but if he can't push him back, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. What do we have over here? And Viper just continuing to expand his economy. Losing these farms here, though, as I said, he will get harassed by these galleys over here. Surprise he hasn't gone up to War Galley, though. That could be a worth worthwhile upgrade, honestly, considering he'll be able to snipe all this area here. Down Tech here and for Town Viper, Center. though, probably the best idea. Looks like he is going to lose this ram here. And knights are being absolutely destroyed here by these massive crossbows. And a viper taking the initiative again, going for more counters, going for camels. Camels, of course, able to close in on archers extremely quickly. And as well as being able to get that bonus against the knights, the knights, of course, extremely weak against camels. However, these archers will do significant damage to the camels. So if they can't, so if the camels can't get in and damage those knights quick enough, he's not going to have much. Well, it's not going to really be really much fun. And we do have a monastery coming up, so we could even expect a monks to be coming out right now. And is that mangonel going to get? It looks like that mangonel is going to go down. However, these camels are going to do a fair bit of damage at this stage. Camels are absolutely destroying the knights at this stage. And bringing those camels back, doing the smart thing. And we have monks being created. So we could actually go for the conversions on these knights and try and push them out. If he manages to do that, he will be in a great position. Viper putting the pressure on here really well. Only down by 300 points now. So he is closing that gap, gap extremely quickly. Quickly. Chris, of course, it does have this advantage with the water being able to have all these fishing ships out, but he looks to be in quite a bad position. His army count isn't bad, and it looks like Viper, though, if that Manganel can get off a few good hits, could be in a lot of trouble. We have our first monk out there. Do we have another one? We have another monk being created, so obviously he's going to go for some of the conversions on this. Try and keep this monk safe while he can convert as much as possible. And we do have a Manganel out there for Chris, though, but being taken out there, monk going down there. And I believe I heard another monk there. Where have we got? We've got a monk there, right in plain sight, of course. And it looks like he did get one conversion there. Can we tell? Can we tell at all? Can't really tell at all, actually. Both players opting to get the armor upgrade. Probably a better chance, considering they are up against so many archers. And in there with these camels. These camels, I don't believe Chris has any army left, honestly. This could be good game if he can't come back for this. Let's have a look at his resources quickly. Doesn't have much there at own. Only 200 gold, 200 food, and 120 wood. 100 stone. He's going to be in a lot of trouble, honestly. He does have that water control, but at this point, what does it offer? Viper, keeping his resource extremely low. Going to be able to get a castle out soon, actually. And whether or not he decides to castle up here on the front line, he's got these stone miners here. He might be able to castle up here, actually. Looks like he will lose these archers here if these camels can't get around quick enough. These knights going to be able to absolutely slaughter these crossbowmen. And it looks like they're going to go down there. Yes, those are being killed. But we do have these camels coming around here, going to be able to attack these knights and do quite a bit of damage. What have we got down over here? We have knights being converted. 
We have mangonels being destroyed and more knights being created. So knights being extremely effective in this game, absolutely flooding his opponent here. Chris still on the knight count there, but what do we have for resource-wise? Resource-wise, he's down to 30 gold and 40 food. So either he's keeping his production really high, and what do we got from these stables? And not even producing camels now, not even producing any more units there. So it looks like he is running extremely. Viper putting a castle up in the middle of Chris's base. Right now, this is a great comeback right here. We have all these knights here. If these go down, he's going to be, it's going to be a good game. Especially if this castle comes up, good game as well. Going to be able to target all of these buildings around here. And push him right back into this section here. And it looks like he's coming around at this side here. Going to be able to do a lot of damage if he can get out and around. We do have a town center coming up in the middle of a Viper's main economy here. But unless he can actually get in, he's not going to be able to do a lot. We do have this castle up in the four position right now. Pushing out a very hard. Pushing out extremely hard. Looks like that blacksmith is going down. We do have this barracks here. Looks like this barracks will be the next one to go down. And what do we have up here? Chris is absolutely into Viper's economy down here. Probably speed it up by getting rid of those crossbows, but not a lot he can do right now. Whether or not Chris actually knew this was all going to be here, I can't tell. Camels are getting killed off extremely quickly by opposing camels. And it looks like he's going to have to garrison this town centre to keep all of these knights off play. Monastery coming up here, so going to want to try and get some converts. This area up here has been completely shut down, however. And it's neck and neck right now. There's 100 points in it. We do have this town centre going down for Chris, though. So doesn't look like he's going to be able to stop that at all. Luring at these knights into range of this castle here. And... Chris up here trying to do as much damage as possible, but Viper's economy is very well sealed off. He's got these town centers around, got lots of archery ranges, got lots of stables, more stables coming up down here. So Chris isn't going to be able to do too much, actually. Monk being created, going to be able to try and convert some of these villages, maybe some of these knights as well. But Viper is just pushing in down here so well. It looks like he's going to lose these battering rams, though. Probably could be worth calling them back, but it doesn't look like it is going to. This town center is being repaired. Do we have... What is the army count for both players? Let's have a look. And we are currently spectating Chris. Chris has 12 cavalry, 9 warships, and 1 ranger, as well as 1 monk. Viper sitting on 11 cavalry right now. So he does have the cavalry upgrade there. But what is he going to do? He's going to have to... Castle coming up in the middle of Viper's economy there for Chris. Viper has overtaken Chris in score, though. Up by 100 points, probably due to this economy destruction down here. If Viper can get rid of this castle down here and start doing some damage to Chris's base up here, it will definitely be a good game because he's pushed him way too far back here. He's starting to run out of gold down here. In fact, he's only got 20 gold left on this pile here. So unless Chris can... And I believe Viper has gone Imperial Age. Chris is not, so Viper having an even bigger advantage right now. And Chris isn't going to be able to do much until he can actually take some gold mines because Chris has no gold mines in his possession right now. Slow-mo shot there from that. Castle coming up here for... Viper, so that's another castle. Castle coming up on this side for Chris, though. however, trebuchets on these are going to be able to do a lot of damage. Whether or not that is garrisoned with a war elephant right now, I can't tell, so let's have a quick look. We do have the Cavalier upgrade from Viper, so good game definitely on the way from Viper. We do have a war elephant inside this castle, but it is being shot at by trebuchets, so not a lot is going to be able to do that, and I believe we do have a trebuchet inside. There we go, trebuchet right here as well. Taking out these castles, not looking good for Chris at this point. Cavalier in here, going to be able to do a hell of a lot of damage. Got that plus four armor upgrade as well. So going to be able to do that extreme countering there. Trebuchet up in here, so he's going to be gunning for this town center. And Viper doing an extremely good play right here. Coming back from under by a lot, losing that water. However, Chris is keeping this game going. He does want to get it. He does not want to lose it. Cavalier fight going on down here. We've also got camels, heavy camels now as well. Got that armor upgrade as well. So it looks like Chris is going to go down right now. He is losing all his villages. And there we go. Chris has resigned. Maybe a rage quit there. Could have been the fact this castle was coming up. Could have been these trebuchets. Or could have been the fact that he got his entire army killed down here. This castle was under treb fire. And this one was too. So... Uh, in all in all, very good play from Viper there, coming back from absolutely nothing. The ending scores being 10,073 to 8,377 to Chris. So, thanks for watching, guys. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe.